All right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us. This is News Check. Today we are just talking about a lot that is shaping the conversation in the country. The National Assembly is resuming its regular sitting today afternoon uh, with a full entry. And uh, earlier there, before we took a break, uh, Edward Kabasa had a sit down with the majority leader, Amos K. Munya, talking about some of the expectations and some of the issues that are going to form a heated debate at the floor of the House. And one of them is is uh, the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill of 2020 and a lot of issues also that have uh, shaped the political landscape in the country. We'll be delving into that interview as we continue having this conversation. But in studio, joining us now is a Member of Parliament for Tigania West, Mwishimiwa John Mutunga. Thank you so much for creating time for us. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. And yes. we have also been engaging uh, Steve Mogaka, constitutional lawyer. Thank you, uh, Steve, for staying with us. Thank you. Now, uh, just earlier when we were starting the conversation and even uh, during the interview uh, with the majority leader, what we asked and what we are keen on is the expectations that lie ahead today. And I'd just like to get also your views, Moshimiwa. Um, later in the afternoon, you expected to be going there to resume business. And I envy your job, by the way. <laughs> You're coming back to work in February. I wish I was you. But that, that, is, that is on a lighter note. What is your expectation? Uh, first of all, we work throughout. <laughs> Actually, we work more when we are not in Parliament than when in, we're in Parliament. <laughs> all right. So we've been working, and uh, I think for us, coming back to Nairobi is a break. Oh, uh, okay. of, but there are very many issues that have been lined up. Many bills are queuing. Some of them are even in multiples, like, of course, the, the B, what you are calling popularly the BBI bill. <laughs> uh, we have two uh, of them. And uh, the, 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 the speaker has guided that then be matched so that we have at least one bill presented to the House which will be debated upon. So there are very many others which, will, which are coming up. And uh, in a session of Parliament, we are able to do as much as there is time. COVID has affected us a lot. We've not been able to be sitting the way we were for three days. Uh, we, have, we haven't by had intensive committee meetings to, you know, distill some of these issues in the bills. And therefore, we still, I don't know, there is going to be a, a meeting tomorrow, I think, um, by the House Business Committee, uh, which will be considered this afternoon. And the House Business Committee will be looking at how, what needs to be done and what is possible to be done. How many times shall we be meeting in a week? And then uh, whether it is two days or like before, or is it going, are we going back to? Uh, but based on the circumstances, since we are not yet out of partial kind of lockdown and we are keeping uh, social distances, uh, then it is going to be, uh, we are going to, we might have to maintain two days. If we maintain two days, then it means we have to, you know, uh, spread the business that there is for, uh, into the, the remaining time. So uh, there is a lot that is going to be coming, and uh, we hope we'll be able to do as much as is expected of us. Mm. And we, we also, as Kenyans, are expecting you will do that. Yeah. But then just to get this out of the way, um, yesterday, as six nominated senators were expelled from the party, yes. the Jubilee Party, yes. today there is a parliamentary group meeting by senators belonging still to the, uh, belonging, uh, to the Jubilee Party. I don't know, uh, is it... Uh, what I would call tightening of the grip. What is happening within the party from your own interpretation? <laughs> uh, in my own, um, the way I perceive this, uh, I'm not very surprised. Uh, it's like it was expected something would have to be done, especially to the nominated members of parliament. I know that the senators had already been called to the disciplinary committee. We expecting the disciplinary committee to give their verdict. And that is it. So uh, they have been, uh, uh, expand from the party, but they still have been given an opportunity to appeal. So maybe during the appeal, their case may be hand, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe we may have a different, you know, decision. Mm -hmm. So we, let me say, first of all, I'm not surprised that that happened. Uh, secondly, we have an opportunity, if they have an opportunity to appeal, and through the appeal, I am sure there is going to be arguments and counter arguments, and therefore we, they even have an possibility to go to court. Because the, constitution, the party constitution is subject to the national constitution and subject to national laws. So there will also be now possibility to be heard by even other, you know, people other than just the party, you know, functionaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think it's a very good idea to expel people from the party. You see, if you know how Kano died, a very strong party died 
Colonel started by expelling one member, two members, whoever does not seem to be a Nyayo person is expelled. Finally, there are more people out there than there were inside. And that's how Kano died. So, so how, what are some of the alternatives that probably could have been explored before going to the extreme end there of is, the There is members? need to listen to the people. Uh, in a party, there should be consultations. The, cons the party constitution gives us opportunity for consultations. We have not had those uh, party functionaries meeting, like the governing council has never met. Uh, we don't know. Maybe the executive council met and uh, made those decisions. So we've not really had serious meetings. The, the PGs have just been maybe two or three. Uh, they completely you know. They may say all inclusive PGs have, have been about two. So there is a lot that has been happening in the party which many people do not necessarily ascribe to. Mm -hmm. uh, they do not buy in. Some things are, some decisions are made by a few individuals and then they are imposed on people. And based on uh, the freedom that was given to us by our constitution in 2010, uh, people don't feel like they should go back to the old days of being intimidated and forced to do things that they do not quite agree with. And that is why people feel like uh, we should just hold on and push on and forge on. Uh, uh, Steve earlier suggested that, you know, if you do not um, support a particular clear standpoint of a party, then as a member you have the option of maybe exiting <laughs> or taking other alternative routes. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, was that an option probably? Yes, I, 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 I want to pick his one clear standpoint. When, there's a, when they, the standpoint is, is not even defined and there's no clarity, what you do be supported. So, so if there's nothing to support, no then you don't support nothing. <laughs> see, you see, <laughs> there, there is this assumption. Uh, this, this is coming from there is this assumption. There is no I clear direction. I want no. to agree with them <laughs> totally. That if it is very clear, discussed, agreed up. You see, when you put something before the people, they will pass. They will try to interrogate it. They will give you their views. Then you'll agree on a. You know, and they'll move together. Even if they are so divergent, people will look at it very objectively and they'll tell you, this we can do, we can deal with. Mm -hmm. This we can't deal with. But then when you decide, when an individual within a party, for instance, irrespective of the position, decides this is the direction I want to go, does not communicate to anyone, moves on anyway, and then expect everyone just to follow, it becomes very difficult. Your, your comment. It's not possible. My, my, my comment, uh, Mutunga, <laughs> I think uh, I, I did say clearly that uh, where you disagree uh, with the organ uh, that you belong to, the majority within that organ take a decision. And where you don't agree with it, uh, you just step aside. Yes. Uh, but I must uh, confess that as citizens we, and members of various political parties, we have also failed ourselves. Uh, because the major political parties have uh, not held national delegates conferences and they have not been called. But the cons party constitutions do provide mechanisms of a member initiating uh, 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 such uh, national delegates co 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 meetings. Uh, and I must confess all of us members of uh, various political parties have not taken the initiative. And if we were truly serious um, uh, that uh, we have lacked uh, um, a, a, a place to ventilate uh, our thinking about uh, the political party to which we subscribe, we need to be patriotic enough uh, to initiate um, uh, a member's uh, 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 invite to other members to convene as a, a national delegates conference. So perhaps going forward, and that is where I said we are very political, um, uh, uh, very weak political parties as much as we also have very weak members in uh, political parties who don't um, uh, stand for their rights. Uh, it's, un it's unfortunate for uh, the members who have had to be expelled because that was the only way, uh, as I said, when the, 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 their position is in conflict with that position of the party, uh, they should have recused. Which Moshima Mutuka says, there is no position. <laughs> there is no clear there is the position. of the position of the party. You see, you may not know. No. Uh, I want to just address this point. <laughs> yes, indeed, there is a provision within the party that members can actually call for, an, uh, for a special general there meeting is. based on the circumstances, based on... Uh, but if you look at what has been happening in Jubilee, first of all, Jubilee kind of um, broke into two parties, two s s factions. There's a faction called Tanga Tanga, I don't know where that came from. And there's another one called Kieleweke, which I also don't know where, they, where it came from. <laughs> but they are there anyway, and they have ascribed to it, they have bought it. So, so people say it's okay, I'm a member of Tanga Tanga or whatever. Uh, but before you got there, there was a lot that was not known to anyone. 
People were hoping and waiting and anticipating for a meeting. The party constitution is very clear. Within six months of an election, we should have had a general election for the party. There was none. Then we kept on hoping. And you know, everybody uh, is very much attached to the party. We like our president. We like our party leadership. We like our, you know, our manifesto, our vision, and you know the strategic direction. And this, the vision is fully shared. But unfortunately, the, the drivers of this vision started having ideas that are not very much, you know, accepted by the people. They're accepted in the sense that they have not been fully shown to the people, the members, and the members have not, you know, identified with this idea. So we were finding ourselves surprised of every occurrence as a surprise. And then this, this, putting up the other possibility would have been interpreted to be a lot more rebellious than what has just happened. Because you see, uh, the party, if you look at the way Jubilee has, 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 has operated, in a way that there's a lot of suspicion, there's a lot of mistrust, <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, uh, it's like it is gay and towards, if it goes this way, it is one, so who is leading? Because, you know, split, uh, Jubilee split because of alliances. There are those people who have worked very close to the with the deputy president, and they found themselves in that sector without necessarily <laughs> deciding this is where I want to be. And then there are those others who have, for some reasons, been able to identify with the Keloeke team, and they found themselves there, and they are still fitting in. There are the others who are standing in between. One day they are here, the other day they are there. <laughs> you see, when you see such confusion from a mature, you know, people who are very, edu very educated and very, you know, experienced, then you realize there is a, a lot of a lot, a lot of either misinformation or lack of information to allow people to make proper decisions. How long and is this? It is because of attributions mm -hmm. that the party the, the party members could probably not take that decision because it would have been attributed to somebody, somebody else. You see, it was geared towards uh, pointing at someone. If you do anything, it means it's so and so who is spreading this. Okay. So we did not want uh, that to happen. So okay. we tried to protect well, ourselves from well said. at least sending out someone. <laughs> well, that's what everybody else is waiting for. Everybody well said, Mishi. Well, 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 that is what people have been waiting for. Before, before <laughs> you comment, uh, still. Yes. But you know, this is this is a party that has. Is it is it one year and in, 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 in plus just to deliver on their mm -hmm. promises to Kenyans, yeah. and uh, there seems to be a lot of discord within the ruling party. Are there deliberate efforts to actually bring every member into one bus and sail in the same direction and have this very important conversation about delivering the promise of the big, big four agenda? There's a lot before, of effort the on elapses. discipline and punish. That's what the, where the effort is. And when you take the rungu, you know now people decide whether they want to take it or not. There is not so much effort to bring the party members together. Because if you call for a delegates conference, and then, or, 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 yeah, and then you invite some and leave others. It means you've already made a decision, I don't want to work with so-and-so. So those others who are, who are not invited, they keep away. So that's the position in, the, in Jubilee right now. Again, Jubilee means serious decisions to go and probably uh, form uh, alliances with other parties without having an AGM or a general conference, which would pass some of these things. Procedurally and normally, the decision of a party is not a decision of an individual, whoever that individual is. The decision of a party is the members who sit there, the, the supreme governing organ of the party is the one which makes such decisions. Mm -hmm. So when such decisions are made, and then uh, you just need you all you do is you have to accept people question so they, there's no, because people care there is no hope for this discord ever being resolved where we <laughs> are right now there's nothing that has let me say there is no effort all right there's no <laughs> so effort you had something to yes I, I have uh, 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 picking from uh, honorable mutunga's cue uh, truth be told um, uh, where the rain started beating us is where there was uh, a purported merger between URP and TNA and got baptized as Jubilee. Why purported? Uh, because <laughs> it is now playing out that there was never a merger. It was a, a come we stay. Uh, and and, and, and uh, it is like uh, the tolerance between the two uh, political parties in, the, in their come we stay was only in term one. I don't know, Mwishimiwa may uh, tell us me, why term one, that. But, uh, <laughs> but now it's like uh, each of these uh, uh, actors have started exhibiting their true colors and uh, um, they are seeing faults in, uh, in, in one another. And in political um, uh, uh, relationships such as this, it is usually interests that start, uh, 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 you know, getting into conflict, uh, either um, the expectations of uh, uh, one 
are not met, uh, or the other uh, looks at the, uh, the other partner as being too ambitious. And really, this is where our problem begins. And the drift that we are seeing apart is, uh, is really um, a walking back to a TNA URP like, uh, like a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and Liz Mweshmiwa tells me yes, different. I and I think I this is knows. why, because each of these <laughs> parties the came area. into this marriage with children. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 that is why uh, uh, some of the children are now be, being found illegitimate and they are being kicked out <laughs> before their mother. No, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you cannot say that. Let me shed some light. Come with <laughs> uh, I think it wasn't a, a come with stay. It was, <laughs> it was, it was so not a come with stay. Some of them actually <laughs> stayed for long yeah. because they stay, the staying period is not defined. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened? There was intense negotiation over quite some time on how do we want to move together. The idea of bringing parties together was to nationalize the, 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 the ruling party, let me say. Or to, first of all, to strengthen Jubilee, and secondly, to make it truly national, to bring all the other small parties together. For instance, the mayor asked people, we had a party called, uh, we were calling it the bus. bus. <laughs> <laughs> you had a the bus. bus party is inside there. So <laughs> we even, even right now we meet and ask ourselves, is it possible to, st to start the engine of the bus? <laughs> now that thing seems to have gone the way they have. So several parties came, to, I think about 11 parties came together and formed the Jubilee. And they, they seen that their party position, they completely did away with their parties. They dissolved their parties and formed the Jubilee. Not joined the Jubilee, formed the Jubilee. So when you completely do away with yourself, it's really not coming, it's this proper marriage. It's like when you know a you husband and wife, you mother. become one. And you become, you become one. We became one, all of us. <laughs> Not that we are one. Uh, <laughs> we need, we need to operate. <laughs> Actually, here, really interesting you know, here, here, there was no, there was no, we, we, nobody was looking at the other one as not equally, you know, important within the party because we are one. So we became one and moved on as one. But where we decided, decided to do things, maybe the husband, I don't, in this case, <laughs> it was, decides to do certain things or the wife does certain, certain things. <laughs> and in any case, they are also the children, as you say. <laughs> so there was discontent, and there was a little bit of a lack of, you know, satisfaction. People care. People have conflict because they care. And because of, of, of the things that happened thereafter, and they happened so fast, and uh, there was no d un unified decision. The, the vision is shared, the objectives are very much unified, but when it comes to, when decisions come from without the party, and they seem to be engineered in a certain direction, and this particular principle or philosophy has not, be, has not been fully accepted by the members of the party, because when you're dealing with individuals who are different, you must take time to make sure they, that they buy your idea. Mm. They understand, they, you know, Jubilee was very cohesive, Jubilee was very strong. When Honestly, you believe first was strong. No, in fact, <laughs> second time. First time, no, there were two. First time, they, that is when there was a couple stay. <laughs> in the second phase, there was marriage. So in this, in this marriage, things went anyway. I don't know what happened. I think, I think the friendship within the first time was good. But, but they you believe delivered. So let me come back to delivery of the objectives. Uh, there is a delivery mechanism. How, how, how is the ruling party planning on delivering that? objective in this, in this the, 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 marriage. Let's the interpretation of the ruling party's manifesto came up with four big ideas to deliver one food security for all two universal health three housing number four uh, industrialization or manufacturing these are key if you can satisfy number one food security you'll have done a lot uh, if you, if you, if you go. So they are all again intertwined. Again, the executive has a total dispensation of ministers and everything. You know, you have the capacity. You have very well experienced people. You have the resources to deliver. Every system now needed to tune up to this big four. And th there's no reason why big four should not In deliver. your own judgment, yeah. currently looking at the political landscape, is it providing an, an opportunity for that to be delivered, for even such, you know, objectives to be achieved? Yes. Looking at the dynamics that are coming into play. The politics. Let, let, and, and be very honest. <laughs> I want to be very honest response, with you. Yeah. <laughs> politics has not necessarily affected a delivery. What politics has, has done is more or less segregated, kind of shifted the focus from certain areas to others. What am I saying? I'm saying that if it is in terms of food security, when you, pro when you have a whole ministry in charge of that and other institutions which are related to that ministry, which can deliver the function of food security, 
If it is manufacturing, you can combine maybe one or two. Maybe agriculture can come in with the trade and also industrialization to, to see how they can structure. Those fabrics, that, that, that software was not properly wired. That's why the problem could be. The other thing is having enough resources to, 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 to do this and using the resources for the purpose they are intended. So there has been a lot of uh, misuse of resources, a lot of, you know, misprioritization. I sit in the budget committee and I know big four is a portion of resources. It's given money mm -hmm. to the tune around 500 something, I mean close to 500, uh, 500 um, uh, billion. 400 something between 470 to 500 billion. So that should be able to move the, the industrialization, should be able to move the housing, should be able to move the others. So politics out there, bickering and everything within the party does not affect the technocrats from doing their work. Do they should be able to deliver. No, no, in fact, uh, I'm surprised when Shmiwa is saying is, uh, is because look. politics has belittled the, the, the four because uh, the president and uh, his, uh, his the think tank uh, thought about uh, them as big four. But there are people within Jubilee and fairly senior people who don't consider the four any longer big. Yeah, they are no, no longer big. Uh, they are no longer big and therefore there are bigger things uh, uh, they are, the, 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 that they are dealing with. And Mwishmiwa, uh, if it be true, that close to four, five hundred billion has been allocated um, to actualization of the big four. Why would the ruling party be squabbling? I would have expected that all troops and all energy should have been uh, marshaled towards actualizing that big four. Every Kenyan should be clapping today saying we are headed in this direction. Um, uh, 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 why it not for COVID? I expected that this country would have leaped, uh, uh, leaped forward. Why would there then be a priority of uh, the biggest uh, in fact, there, there is now a big one um, uh, called the war against, for or against the BBI. Um, uh, uh, yet, uh, earlier before Mwishmiwa came, uh, uh, I'd said that uh, this big four would not have taken off were it not for the handshake because we were in turmoil. Yeah? Why then does the proponents of the big four have problems with the handshake that has brought a climate uh, uh, that is enabling for, you know, the implementation of the big four, which include uh, BBI. Yeah, Mr. why would we have a problem would within like the ruling party? Yes, part? first of all, maybe the question I would like and ask our, our friend uh, is, uh, why do we as Kenyans feel like when we put up a government, the opposition is denied? resources is denied opportunities to grow. Why does that happen? It's because of the way we form our government. If we form our government in an inclusive manner, because what is different is politics. Development should not come in. Choice of who is supposed to lead what process should, not, should focus on the entire Kenya. We should look at the map of Kenya. If we are able to focus on the map of Kenya, and honestly, we put the entire country uh, in all positions. What I'm trying to say is that we are proportionate allocation of resources in terms of human and non-human resources. Would do we have people? Isn't that possible? Why has it happened in other countries? No, 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 look Let at me give you country. an example. Look I want you to bring it into it context. It is possible. Is it I'll possible tell you why. and practical for I'll tell us you why. to separate development and politics? We did not, in, in my very considered opinion, we did not need handshake. What we needed is to ask ODM or NASA Give us, we are pushing so much for you in terms of CSS, in terms of PSS, in terms of parasites, or in terms of chairman, in terms of resources. This is what we want to apportion to you because you are a significant party. You are number two. You are, you are so many people following you. They need also to feel that they are in, in government. In government does not mean that you take everything. If the winner takes it all, the winner takes it all is at the top in terms of the leadership. But when it comes to distribution of resources and everything else, we should look at Kenya and see how many Kenyans are actually accessing this. The problem we have right now, even if we shake hands and do whatever, we must go back and be equitable in distribution of resources, equitable in distribution of jobs, equitable in distribution of opportunities. Creating five positions up there so that you may give one maybe to Nyanza, another one to Eastern, another one. That is tribalism. That's interesting tribalism. What we need to do is to ensure that whoever sits at the seat of the member of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the how, the, the unifying factor of the, of the country, 
does is distribute resources in the view of the significance of that of the different segments right. of the country. How about then the the 35 percent? I thought you are actually uh, breathing hot and cold. The 35 percent allocation to uh, the, the the counties is precisely what we are talking about, and uh, what in your words you are calling tribalism uh, in the constitution it is called inclusivity. Yeah, and I had uh, the president say it. Uh, very bluntly when he was in Kakamega, uh, isn't it time w for others also to, you, you know, to, to I'm take I'm leadership? I'm going to I want to ask so, you. Body body language so, I'm so I'm calling about. You know, I am very surprised. About the BBI I'm actually very surprised. Satisfied with. I'm actually very surprised <laughs> that a Kenyan would ask why we disagree, because we know it. It is because of the way we apportion resources in this country. That's why we disagree. When you appoint a president from a certain tribe, everybody from that tribe benefits. That is wrong. It should not be that way. Which means you are, five, in, the, you are in the budget this committee, you say. Allow to finish. <laughs> yes, I am in that budget yes, committee. Yes, yes. And the president doesn't sit in the budget committee. Yeah. So I think, please, I think, I, let's I think tell I would, I would tell the you truth. outside this glare of the camera <laughs> what exactly happens. Because <laughs> let me tell you something. Oh, my goodness. What but is important is to make sure that you look at Kenya as one unit so that everybody feels satisfied. And it is possible. Let me ask you, if we went to NASA and told them, OK, we have apportioned 40% of the positions to you, give us, do you think they would fight? They would fight because you are giving 70% of the, of the position, or 80% to one party, and then the others can go to hell. That is why Kenyans fight. We don't distribute resources, we don't distribute positions, and creating those for, in fact, what we need is to grow this economy. That's what we need as a country, to be able to have people satisfied. Why do people fight? One, they are available for hire because they are cheap. They have no means of livelihood. Secondly, they are dissatisfied. If they are, and you know, people feel like when they have their own at the top, they are likely to achieve, as to achieve a certain mileage in terms of accessing national resources. Are those issues which is you're wrong. raising not captured within the BBI, BBI report? Do, BBI have you read talks it first? No, 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 no read, They are not captured. Have you They're read not. the report first? Have you read the? I read the first version, which was available to us, which we were given at Bomas. The Bomas one report I read. From then on, it has been changing so much form and uh, and and, uh, and the context How sure are you that, that I actually not? do not. Know. How sure you? I see not what is coming out from whoever discusses this, the way they put it. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Do we really need to go to change the constitution so that you can allow that 5% to go to the counties? No. The constitution provides, it's a constitution law. Did you say that? Yeah. Does it know that it, At least. the constitution provides us all, a minimum of 15% should go to the county? If the National Assembly is empowered or empowers itself enough without interference, to decide now we are going to give that 5% or 40% to the counties, would that be disputed by anyone? They no, give right. we, we I, don't. Wish, I wish we had more time for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so we don't need a constitution Unfortunately, change. we are running out of time for this conversation. Uh, let's look at the way forward. Uh, this is going to be part of what we are going to experience at the National Assembly, a heated debate on the BBI bill. It's popularly known as the BBI bill, the Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill of 2020. As the members of parliament are going to be having a conversation around this bill, first of all, Steve, what ought to guide this conversation? What is it that would, would help us really, uh, you know, find a way forward on this conversation? I think ideally, uh, leave ideally, the, leave the other matters aside. The uh, <laughs> I mean, first of all, is that uh, we have a very dispassionate uh, uh, engagement about the BBI proposal, uh, and I say since this is the first amendment of our constitution, we may not get it all. Uh, what we are looking for is value addition, and particularly on the menace of in the formula for income distribution in this country. Our constitution now uh, says that a minimum of 15% should be devolved. Yeah? And we have seen that uh, the governments that we have had are tokenists because they you know, they, they are not keen in going beyond the 15%. And that is why it is very critical that we cast the 35% as the irreducible minimum on the Constitution. So that going forward, we do not want to leave it to the discretion of the government of the day to decide whether they will give 16% to devolution or, or, or 20 or 25%. Let us lock it. 
at uh, 35%. And, uh, and, and, and I think that uh, is, is agreed across the board. What perhaps uh, is not agreed, and uh, that is why politicians will help, um, uh, is about the restructuring of our governance structures. Um, uh, if we mean well for devolution, yeah, and we lock it at 35%. Do we then still want to leave uh, the 65% of the remaining resources uh, to be commanded uh, uh, by one person in state house? That is the reason why to be inclusive in decision making about the remaining 65%, those organs of governance need to be flattened uh, so that instead of having one man um, uh, making decisions, uh, we have a minimum uh, uh, of four or five people from different regions of this country who will bring the sensitivities uh, from the various regions of this country on the, the table in making a decision on how this uh, uh, remaining 65% of national budget uh, is going to be uh, distributed. And if we look at numbers, numbers don't lie, uh, uh, we should be able uh, uh, to get a consensus and, uh, and, 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 and agree that uh, even if we expand the governance organs, it is Kenyans going to occupy them. Right. As long as we don't have Kenyans from one region only occupying all those organs that are going to be expanded. Okay, <coughs> Steve, as you add up. As yeah, you I add just wanted to, to respond to what you said. Yes. The last thing, uh, the mechanism for ensuring that uh, we put the correct people, I mean, we put, we spread out these positions, it's not there. I don't know whether it is going to be in the bill. It's not there. Because what happens is that it is still the, the winning, the ruling party, which will take all. That's what the, the BBI says. It says, first of all, the president and deputy will campaign as presidency. Then the majority leader, of course, the majority leader is the leader of the majority party in the House, is going to be the, 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 the prime minister. And then you'll, you'll have two other people appointed by the, by the same what? <laughs> president. <laughs> so one thing I want to, be, to make very clear is, if you can decide to ignore one, you can ignore five. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can ignore even 10. So it depends on how we really spread out this. All right. Number three, what is important is to look at how do we satisfy our people. That's a primary thing. Grow the economy, spread the wealth. Don't focus on five people, five families. At the end of the day, they go home. They don't go to their communities to share. All I mean, right. I think we need, we need to be clear here. The other thing that I think I need to, to also come back to, we are there's something he said, for time. something that is also important. <laughs> that 5%, locking that 5%, mm. can I tell you something? We'll go back to Kenudi Awamwangi to tell him to unbad more functions to the county. That is the reality. There is no money in this country. So we are poor and we have to keep on borrowing. So the, the constitution so of Kenya... So even if you say that five goes to the county, uh -huh. they'll be given more responsibilities. We are just still thinking that there is nothing that... <laughs> there is wish, no I additional wish, resources I to the county. more time to If continue. right now we don't have enough resources <laughs> to the county, we can't give them enough money in time. <laughs> Thank Where you so much. From? Thank you so much, Abishimua John Mutunga, Member of Parliament, Ghana West. I was also engaging Steve Mogaka, constitutional lawyer. Mushimua, is it likely to say law? going to shoot it down. What? The Constitution of Kenya Amendment. It will come and we will look at it in okay. its context. <laughs> Please look at it positively. Yeah. Yeah, we'll <laughs> Let's <laughs> cross the bridge when we get there. When we get there, we'll look okay. at it. Yes. Sawa, sawa. So thank yeah. you so much, gentlemen, for creating time for us. And thank you also for creating time to catch the latest right here on News Check as you are unpacking some of the issues that are shaping the conversation in the country. Now you have a clear understanding. We want to pave way for the Swahili version of the program, Tamrini. Do stay for that. My name is Safina Cheng Ouma and our sign language interpreter is Byron Abuli, of course, assisted earlier by Lensa Odingo. Enjoy the rest of your viewing.